Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today at Publicist Commerce on the I Could Buy That series. We want to keep this concise, so let me remind you of the rules of the game. First, we invite a credible guest. They share with us a novel thought, a different way to look at our world of commerce. This, one's, uh, this month's guest is Guy Keeling from, uh, from Barilla. He's actually back for his second session to give us even more insight. Second, we have him open with a thesis and a short sentence uh, to set the stage. It's probably something that's going to be counterintuitive. We then give them the opportunity to support it with three data points or anecdotes uh, to back it up to hopefully get us all thinking about our industry differently. So, Guy, nice to see you again. Thank you for nice being with us. You too. So, for those who did not watch the first session, um, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Guy Keeling. I am a Brit within an Italian organization um, and I run our e-commerce business globally. Um, I work and live in the UK, but have a, an international role. Uh, work, and a free e-commerce for us is, is broadly speaking, working with big um, e-retailers. So that might be Amazon, but it might also be Walmart or Carrefour or Alibaba, anyone who sells uh, Barilla products online. Okay. So how often do you eat pasta? Well, I've got three teenage kids, um, so it's a super meal to serve them at the end of the day. Uh, they're all very active, and I should think we'll probably get through. The, the average UK household eats uh, about four kilos a year. I reckon we achieve that at least every week. I was about to say, it sounds like I am a <laughs> <UK> household. <laughs> you should look at my Amazon bill. That's essentially <laughs> what I can see. Um, okay, so I I know that we've spoken in private before, and your your background is is truly remarkable. It's incredible. You have a background in the military and P and G, which you know I joked before that that's pretty much the same thing. Uh, as a marketer, we we try to avoid the proctoids. Um, a, a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> a good friend of mine, Carlos, you know, speaks in acronyms, is, is, you know, is very diligent about his process, tests everything, you know, thinks through everything, has got a deck about everything. You know, I see, I see the laser focus in your eyes. Can you please speak to us about, like, the, the military experience, the P&G experience, and how that shaped yeah. the professional? Yeah, sure. So um, I was a, an officer in the British Army um, and during the uh, late 80s and early 90s, so the Cold War. Uh, Northern Ireland, uh, so sort of counter-terrorism, um, um, Bosnia, so uh, civil war, um, put, put into the middle of a civil war, uh, and my sort of the, uh, the, the, area, the set of skills I developed was, was very much about running operations, running an ops room, putting together teams of people, normally at quite short notice, uh, to run um, operations in, in difficult and far-flung places. So very often, you would uh, do an appreciation, you'd figure out what you needed, uh, you'd go and um, uh, um, write, write a paper or contribute to a paper uh, and, uh, and ask, ask for those, ask for that support. And it might be, heli it might be um, helicopters, particular type, it might be um, uh, vehicles or, or, or boats. Uh, it, it would almost certainly be uh, different sorts of troops with different skill sets. And then that's what, you, that's what you're operating with uh, in a normally a, uh, a particular area of responsibility for a particular time frame, normally for six month, a very intense six month period, so 24 seven for six months, uh, thrown in at the deep end, um, and uh, and in, you, you generally go through sort of a, a, a short and intense training period to form the team, but that does you you, you don't mess around. It happens quickly. You, you try and form a team within. Uh, six to eight weeks, that kind of time frame, uh, and then from there, obviously you're relying on each other um, very, very fully. So leave, leaving that environment and joining um, a customer business team at, 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 at Procter and Gamble was, and you are, you're, you're in, you were joking, but it, there are some strong similarities, and it is a very, very, I think PNG is an excellent landing point for anyone coming out of, coming out of the military. But I am, I'm so disappointed that, you know, 30 odd years later, I'm still quite unusual. I, I very seldom come across uh, ex-military people within uh, industry, within consumer goods in, in the consumer goods industry. And I think that's a real shame because the skill sets that you pick up, uh, that flexibility, the, um, the willingness to be brave uh, and, and, and courageous, but also to stand by choices that you make, 
take people with you. The leadership skills, I, I think, are, are really crucial. And um, you know, generally speaking, having an, having an interest in the people around you, whether they're the, your colleagues, your agency partners, your customers, or your consumers, I, I think all of those are very, very good, um, very good things. And they, they're the hallmark to me, anyway. They're the hallmarks of of having been uh, in in the military. Uh, I'm still really very fond of it. And and uh, I guess like a lot of people, that you know, those, those in your when you're in your early to mid twenties, those are, those are the friends. That you make and and um you know, i'm sitting here in my home office uh surrounded by some of the memorabilia from those from those times it's a, a fun times but but i things like le- many of those learnings i carry with me day to day and some of those things are uh, what we want to talk about over the next few minutes yeah so you spoke about you know the the army but also the that training taking you into png of having to to set something up in very short notice and then mm. making it happen, like truly bringing it to fruition, leading a group of people uh, towards a common goal with the resources that you have. Right. Today, the mission that you have is you have a 144-year-old brand, Barilla, uh, with its iconic blue wall <laughs> that you're actually sitting in front of. Yeah. Um, and it's today the 11th most reputable brand in the world. Yeah, absolutely. In a store. I know the wall in a store. I know the pasta in my house. Yeah. And yet my life happens digitally. When that porting from one place to the other today is your mission. How do you approach that? Yeah, it's really it's really tough. And it's a, this is a very, very difficult mindset, mind uh, set uh, change uh, that we have to get into our into the minds of, of, of our folks. Because, you know, when you're playing in a, in, a, in a store environment and you were playing with a big brand in a big and important category, you're you're able to do some some pretty cool things and all of us will have seen will have been down that pastoral and we'll have seen what that looks like mm-hmm. online when you search for pasta there are possibly hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of of possibilities organized in a search and search um on a search results page and you can only see about 24 of them normally in one at the, at the beginning and very often there's a private label uh, which have been put there at the top of the list because yeah. the, they deliver the, the retailer more profit. Um, uh, sometimes they're, they're, they're sponsored search, so uh, competitors can even if it, even if the search term is Barilla, the competitors' products will appear first. So it's a very different environment. It really is, and um, you know we have to figure that out. We have to work with the retailer to try and make sure that we're as shopper focused as possible. So trying to get into the mind of the shopper, what is it they're trying to look for? What are they doing? What's that shopper mission? How are they building that basket? What are they thinking about? What are the constraints that they have, whether that's about time or money or effort or energy? Um, how do we make that that experience? Because it's a repeat experience. Generally speaking, mm-hmm. online shopping, food, grocery shopping takes place every week. So how do we make sure that repeat experience is as um, intelligent and as personalized as possible? And I have to say, as an industry, and I'm speaking here as someone who's been in the industry for a long, long time now. I just don't think we do have a very good job of it. I, I really don't think that um, online shopping is yet easy enough. Um, and when we think about the COVID uh, um, situation over the last um, 15 months or so, and all of the, we keep patting ourselves on the back. All isn't it amazing? All of these millions of people all over the world discovered shopping for food online. Well, they did, but not many of them did, and not very many of them carried on shopping for food online throughout the pandemic. It wasn't something that they discovered, and they thought, God, this is fantastic. This is saving me time, saving me money. This is doing enough for me to come back and do it again. Most of them, for the vast majority, I think, uh, were very, very pleased to get back into store because they felt that that was a better experience for them. So for those people who are keen to shop for food online, we need to do a better job. We really do. And we need to dramatically improve that. So um, there is, there, yes, there's a shift taking place. Yes, there are new opportunities to win. Um, but the online shopping, the grocery online shopping trip is still is still a, is still a difficult experience. I think it's still, it, it takes too long. It's still not easy to find all the products you want and each time you're pretty much having to start from scratch each time you're having to find the the few products that you want 
and they are hidden in the same way that your fix the item basket each week is hidden around the store online we do not do a good enough job to say do you know what ali we think based on the fact that you've done your shopping with us for the last year many years we think you probably you're probably gonna have these things in your basket this week um you know let's start from there we're not doing that we're not doing that well enough yet so there's a lot there's a lot there's a, a big learning step i think for the industry over the over the coming years and and uh, AI, um, uh, faster, faster um, computers, better databases, all of those things coming together with some smart people, smart analytics. I think we're going to get there. I think it's going to be a really exciting few years coming. But um, goodness me, uh, it, we've we've got we've got to move quickly. We've we've got to really make the most of the opportunity. So uh, at this point, I'm triggered because this is a debate that happens at the house all the time. You you literally said that in a year, the average household will have four kilos of Pasta, right? So to go to a store and to transport back four kilos versus having the four kilos delivered to you and picking them from your website, you're still saying that that transaction, that people are going out of their way to go pick up that four kilos and bring it home because the experience that they're being given online is crappier as in relation, is just not worth the trade off. Is that not sad? Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it feels like a fail, right? It feels like a fail. Um, yeah. And I think that the um, if you think about the the, the powers, the the, re the retail powers um, who have been behind the uh, the revolution so far in moving grocery online, they are you've got an online bookseller who's try still trying to figure out how to do food and they will get there. Absolutely. They will get there. Totally believe that Amazon is going to get there. Unlimited. Um, uh, access to money, unlimited access to talent, they will get there, absolutely. Uh, and then the other team, I guess, are the incumbents, the, 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 grocery, the grocery retailers whose asset base is tied up in stores and people, um, and uh, they do a brilliant job of, of, of providing food into, into communities. Um, neither of those groups yet have really nailed what a great online grocery shopping experience is going to be and they're coming at it from two very very different ends um we do see moments where there are some really really smart things happening um i think a very good example from my home country is what Ocado are doing both in terms of some of that smart technology in their pick centers which in the us you're getting into the Kroger, the Kroger business, beginning yeah. to get that in now. Uh, there's some really smart stuff about um, uh, analytics and uh, trying to figure out what your what what we would expect you to have in your basket based on what we can see that you've done previously. But what we're not yet doing is that getting ahead of that. You know what what's in my diary, for instance. You know who who's coming to stay. Am I going to be at home next week, or are we going to be on holiday? Are we going to be eat? Have we got? Am I going to be eating out much next week, or am I going to be eating in? You know, th these are data points that exist. They're in my phone. They're on my calendar. Um, my closest friends know about this stuff, but my grocer doesn't yet. And you know, until we need to sort of begin to build up that that those levels of trust in order to be able to repay that with much much better um, uh, care um of uh, of my time because what this comes down to is you know do i want to spend uh, an hour or two each weekend or every on thursday evenings going around the grocery aisles or am i much much happier spending 10 minutes once a week just making sure that my inventory just think about it as food inventory in my kitchen and my fridge is up to date and it represents a, a perfect match with my needs over my 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 forecastable needs if you like um, over the coming uh, few days, and that's a big shift. You know, we're not we're, we're as an industry, we're not there yet. But but I do think that we're beginning to get there, and I and I'm I, I'm very excited about where where that's where that's going. If, if we put some numbers on it, I, I, I think it, that does help. If you think about a typical large supermarket, mm -hmm. it's around about fifty thousand SKUs, a stock yeah. keeping units inside it. Uh, the average household only buys about 500 different products over the course of the whole year. So one percent, one percent of everything that's in a supermarket is relevant to each individual household. Mm -hmm. And of those 500 items, 
only about 200 of them are on high repeat. So my weekly shopping basket is very, very forecastable. You know, I'm, it's going to contain about 60 items out of the 200 that I very regularly buy. So the, the math is not an in, impossible problem. It really is not an impossible problem. Once you sort of boil it down and make it very, very personal, it's really, really, it's really, really doable, I believe. And, and uh, uh, I, I do think that that's going to be the big shift in, in, in the industry over the coming 24, 36 months. I like how you mentioned this whole like making it personal, just in your your tone of voice, like what I know about the brand, like what I know about you as a professional, you, you seem to be wanting to transfer the empathy within Barilla, empathy within food over to the consumers, which is something we had in the tangible world, but not in the digital world. Is there one thing that you do, you know, considering your background of making it happen? You know, if I were to brand you as, as one headline between the military and PNG and the execution we've seen in Barilla is discipline, right? Mm. Mm. Discipline is, is, is probably what's led to all the success you've had to date. Um, what is something that you are very disciplined about that helps you transfer the iconic of the offline onto online? Yeah, it's a good, very good question. Um, uh, um, it, it, funnily enough, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot in the last uh, six months or so. We're, we're right now, I'm not sure that you, you and I have talked about this before, but we're, we're, Barilla right now is building a center of expertise, a digital center of expertise, or I should say a center of digital expertise mm -hmm. um, in London. Um, and we open um, in about a month's time with 30 people. Um, and we'll build that up to around about 50 people within uh, a year and a half or so. And those that we're bringing together digital marketing, e-commerce, analytics, number of other digital related skills in one place. And what we want to do, so a lot of these are external hires, people who, we've, who we have really admired and, and we're, we're cherry picking uh, exactly the people that we want to bring into this new organization. We want to give it an identity. So I've been thinking very much about what is, how do we distill down that identity, that that digital, um, those digital skills, but made really, really super relevant for our 144-year-old family-run Italian food business. You know, they, and on the one hand, you might think those that, that that feels like a bit of a clash of cultures, but I I think that what that looks like is a way of helping all of our colleagues step into what has been a very confusing um what, what is that what is that digital future for a food manufacturer our our asset is our industrial asset and our brand but when we step in and we're a product focused business when we think about our business well if you describe our business we describe it in terms of a pack of pasta or a jar of pasta sauce or a uh, 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 some biscuits. In the in the digital world, we don't use product based terminology. We talk very much about service related, uh, experiential related. Uh, we talk about um, um, understanding and designing, understanding need states and designing solutions. And that's a very that's all very very different. So, I think I think d discipline is. The discipline is 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 uh, is an important thing. I, I think it's courage, courage and um, uh, good good humour. I think don't take yourself <laughs> too seriously, um, and have a sort of an underpinned with a, a sort of an earnestness and a humility, which we definitely see every day from the Barilla family. I mean, that's absolutely the energy that they bring into the business every day. We see them, and that is is a very humble. And it's a very caring um, uh, mindset, and I think bringing all of that together with a um, uh, an, an irrepressible um, uh, desire for uh, to 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 not just live with change but create change, and I th and I think those are two very very different things. But to be a change creator, that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create these this bunch of people who are going to help the rest of the business individually but also as teams and as uh, as units um navigate uh, this this change uh, 
uh, that is coming not just to us but coming to the industry and we want to be part of that you know we want to help guide that uh, and that's that's really cool that's that's um yeah that's i guess i guess you're right there's a form of discipline in that isn't there yeah um, yeah okay so let me summarize this for the crowd um what you're saying is that Offline success can be ported online, but it needs to be done right. Uh, this is done by transferring iconic assets and the spirit behind them, you know, the blue wall that you have behind you. Yeah. Second is you want to stay true to the brand's role in the shop in shopping and behavior. You want to be in that 1% and in the 1% of that 1% of what happens in a grocery store and in a shopping experience or food experience. And lastly, you got to keep thinking about the brand's role in the future, as you mentioned, in one world, we're known as a box of pasta, but moving forward, we should be known as a service or as an experience. Hmm. And that 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 mindset uh, change plus the power of execution uh, and that earnestness you spoke about ties it all together. So I want to give you a chance um, to our audience. If there was one call out to the market, you know, to get this started, you spoke about how food is behind, how there's so, uh, so much more potential uh, in getting people to truly adopt grocery online, um, or even just your vision generally? What's one call out you'd make to the market to get the ball rolling? Well, it sounds a little bit glib, but it's it's to put aside put aside the the in the individual um, the the the, re the reasons that we found this very difficult to do is because we carry with us every day a load of things that make it very difficult for us to work together. Mm. Um, if we're able to put those things aside and genuinely work together to deliver a quantifiably improved quality of service, experience, um, a, 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 something which is memorable, something which is noticeable something which people will immediately notice and talk about and be want to be part of that requires a lot of different people to do stuff differently and to do it together mm -hmm. I'm absolutely sure that when those moments happen amazing things are able to take place um, but it it does require us to think differently um, and uh, I, I, do, I do think the very best organisations are are doing that. If you think about some of the big, big successes over the last few months and years in the digital space, it is because people and, org and big organisations, many of whom have been around for as long as we have, have been brave enough to do things very, very differently. That takes guts. Got it. Well, thank you for that. Um, I want to say thank you for everyone uh, to everyone for listening. We hope this got you thinking and we'd love to hear your feedback. So drop us an email and join us again next month for another great guest who will hopefully leave you thinking, I could buy that. <laughs>